All right, today I'm gonna to talk about a really cool study that just came out that helps us understand relative and absolute age dating techniques and how they can work together to help constrain the age of small layers in the rock record. So the study that I'm talking about revolves around some fossil footprints. And these were found, um, so these are ichnofossils. So that means they're track fossils. They're not fossils of the actual organism, but fossils that are left behind showing that the organism was moving through an environment. Um, and that's what's recorded. Um, these were found in White Sands National Park, which is in New Mexico in the US. Okay, now White Sands is a really cool place where we have big white sand dunes, hence the name, and the sand here is made out of gypsum. So it's kind of unique. And gypsum is an evaporite mineral. So it forms when we have water that's enriched and this has calcium and sulfate in it. And as the water evaporates, it left behind the gypsum. The gypsum was then weathered and turned into the sand that makes up the dunes there today. Now the really cool thing about these fossils um, is that they've been, these tracks have been known since the 1930s. So they were first, there were some tracks that were discovered way back in the 1930s and they were really big footprints. Um, so the early people who found it thought that this might be Bigfoot, but it wasn't. Uh, these really big fossils were giant ground sloths. So these are really big, big feet. So leave behind these gigantic footprints and they were alive back during the ice age. So they're not alive today. So they're extinct. So that was since then, um, since the 1930s, thousands of tracks have been found, including more of these giant ground sloths. They've also found mammoth fossils. And our mammoth, like this big guy right here, these aren't alive today, um, but uh, they were walking across the landscape during the last ice age and their big footprints are left behind in this layer of gypsum mud or this ancient mud. They've also found ancient human footprints. And that's what the really cool study was looking at today. So what's interesting about these footprints, um, they're found around an area that once had a lake. So this was um, ancient, I'm just gonna write this here. Ancient lake, make sure I spell it correctly, Otero. Um, and this was a lake that was about uh, six, 1,600 square miles in size and it dried up about 10,000 years ago. But before it dried up, it was a lake. And so we know that humans and animals tend to go to watering places. Um, and it's a good place to live around these ancient lakes. Um, but lakes themselves, as water falls on this area, it's going to create mud in the flats around it. And that mud starts to dry out and it creates a perfect place to store um, footprints. So I imagine you've probably, maybe when you were a kid, ran around without your shoes on and stepping in mud, you leave behind really cool footprints. Um, and that's what happened. That's where these footprints are left behind in this very interesting gypsum mud that was once around this ancient lake. Now, the, the interesting thing is we don't know exactly how old, or up until now, how old some of these fossil footprints are. Um, and so that's the big question, is how old? So some researchers actually found a perfect layer. So because this is uh, not an ash layer, so we have, I'm just gonna try to draw this out here. So just imagine that you find these footprints, I'm drawing them in a cross section. So this would be older and younger, but I'm drawing the footprint sideways so you can kind of imagine them. So let's see, I'll try to make it more like a human footprint. And they're very distinct human footprints that we see here. Okay, 
and they're moving through this whole area. So now we do find places where human footprints have been left behind in volcanic mud. So when you have a volcano erupt, it leaves this ash, the ash falls out of the sky, and if it gets wet, it makes a really sticky mud that can record footprints. Ash is awesome because you can radio carbon date it, or excuse me, radiometrically age date it to figure out how old uh, the volcanic ash is and therefore how old the footprints are because they're stored in it. White sands is different because it's gypsum. We can't go and do uh, age dating on the gypsum layer itself. It's just not possible. But what the researchers did, and this is in a journal, art, uh, so it's science, and it was published September 2021, okay? Um, but what they ended up finding out is that uh, when they, they found a layer of these footprints, the footprints are really cool because they have lots of footprints. Um, so they have adults, lots of teenagers and children moving through here. There are like eight different horizons, which means layers, that have the fossils. Um, and they show 61 different individual footprints, and of those, they represent at least 16 different people. So they can look at the size and the shape to figure out kind of which prints might have belonged to, well, some unknown who. We don't know exactly who it was, but we know that this track was made by this, you know, one of these people. And they're crisscrossing. They saw lots of movement of people going about their daily lives. Again, really cool, but how old are they? Well, since we don't have ash, researchers got really uh, creative and they started looking through these layers and they found one set of tracks that were sandwiched between layers of rock that had seeds. So these little circles are representing a grass seed, an ancient seed. And this is called, I'll get it down here, rupia. Now the cool thing about this rupia, because they found it below and above the tracks, they were able to use radiocarbon dating, so our um, carbon-14, and they were able to figure out how old the seeds were below the footprints and above the footprints. And the age below, so the older layer, was 23,000 years. And the rock above, or the seeds above, or 21,000 years. So we know that the footprints, because they're found in between these two layers, uh, were put down between 21,000 years ago and 23,000 years ago. So that's pretty cool. So the process of using um, carbon-14 to age date these grass seeds, that's our absolute age dating technique. And then we're using our relative age dating techniques to know that when we have layers that are put down horizontally, the ones down below are older than the ones above. So that's how we can sandwich these footprints. Um, so that's what I thought was really cool is it shows that we have um, relative and absolute age dating to figure out the age. And further, it's just awesome. Though this study is talking a lot about uh, humans being present on North America. Um, so the big question is why do we care? Um, well, these footprints with this age date has these people very well established in North America during the last glacial maximum. So they call it the LGM. So last glacial maximum. And this is a time when we had huge extensive ice sheets covering North America. Um, so as you put, uh, well, to get that, we have colder temperatures, more ice up on the continents, that lowers sea level, and it exposes Beringia, which is the land bridge between Siberia and Alaska. Um, so the fact that we're finding these fossils of people down in New Mexico um, shows that they were really well established, and they, they could have been there um, long ago. So the um, anthropologists, people are quite excited about this, trying to understand um, the migration of the peopling of the Americas, if you will, and that ties it in. But again, today for understanding the earth, um, it helps us by connecting an absolute age dating um, 
method with some relative age dating to figure out the age of these fossils. I hope you found that as cool as I did today. Uh, keep your eyes open as you read the news because geology is happening everywhere.